Cowboys coach Jimmy Johnson and the team's owner Jerry Jones. Jimmy looking to become just the fourth different coach to win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. He would join Lombardi, Shula, and Noel. The J.J. boys, Jimmy and Jerry, have been a bit of a sideshow here in Atlanta this week. Probably the two most sought-after and quotable personalities here in the days leading up to the Super Bowl. Our Bob Costas was able to sit down with both of them together. I think that we were close. I think we were friends. I don't think that we were, had the relationship that everybody thought when we first got to the Cowboys. Uh, I think everybody you know, felt like we were friends in a way socially uh, as far as spending time together. And, and I think more than anything else, it was respect and, and knowing each other more than it was a, a, a really a friendship to where we spent a lot of time together for you know, 20, 25 years. You were roommates only because it was alphabetical, right? On the road, <laughs> exactly. Jones and Johnson, so you wound up as roommates, not like you were bosom buddies, right? Exactly. It, it happened that for a time we played uh, in and around some of the same positions, but it really was road and, and uh, Jones and Johnson. But uh, let me say that uh, there was a, a, a perception that uh, we were confident and that just wasn't the case when we were there and had uh, a little more time together as people that go to school together. What actually ended up happening is I went in one direction. Uh, I was probably uh, too greedy to go into coaching. <laughs> I, I wanted to make more money than coaches make, I thought. To the extent that there's any problem between the two of you, is the problem more one of ego stepping into each other's spotlight or is it a problem with a flawed working relationship in some way where you might disagree about personnel and he is after all the owner, president and general manager and he has to sign off on all those moves. So what I'm getting to is, it, is it more the personal thing on the ego side like, hey, Jerry, get out of here, I'm the coach or is there actually a practical objection? No, I, I think as far as uh, having something that's flawed in the working relationship, I don't think that there's anything close to that. I think. As far as the decision making, uh, I don't know that it could be any better than the way it is right now. Uh, and we really never had a controversy uh, as far as making decisions and as far as what we wanted to do with the Dallas Cowboys. Here's a quote from Jimmy, and he's issued several like it, but this will suffice. He says, it's obvious Jerry is a frustrated football coach. Now, you told Frank DeFord, I'll tell you what, I could coach this team. I could coach the blank out of this team. And you went on to say you weren't prepared to give it the time and the dedication that Jimmy would bring to it and perhaps wouldn't have the background maybe so that you would be able to pull it off walking right in the door and get the faith of the players. But you seem to believe that just on pure ability you could do it. And he thinks you're a frustrated football coach. Well, he's right and in terms of being a frustrated football coach. But most frustrated football coaches that have any sense at all are sitting at home watching it behind the television set not trying to take the Dallas Cowboys and step out there and try to win Super Bowls with it. I think too much of not only Jimmy, but the great coaches of the game that have been here, Coach Lombardi, Coach Landry, I think too much. I couldn't be sitting in this chair if I actually were serious about stepping out there and really doing it. Suppose there were a button you could push and the players would accept you walking into the locker room as the coach. You wouldn't have to clear that credibility barrier. Do you think you could coach an NFL team? When I'm through and they uh, put me in the ground, my coaching record's going to be zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> but could you do it? I said no. No, not at all. Now this question I think would be different if I put it to Marv Levy about Ralph Wilson, who is one sort of owner, as opposed to putting it to you about Jerry Jones, who is owner, president, and general manager. So in that context, do you respect his football knowledge? Yeah, I, I respect Jerry's football knowledge uh, as an owner and as somebody that loves the game. But you don't respect him as an equal, then I'm inferring to you in terms of football knowledge and judgment. Well, I, I think it, uh, I, I, you know, I, I know uh, because I have spent 30 years, you know, learning what I know right now. And, uh, and not just Jerry, but... Uh, someone that hasn't been doing that for 30 years, uh, I don't know that I would have them as an equal football knowledge um, and, you know, as what I have. Do you have a problem it with that? It shouldn't be. I have no problem with that at all. The facts are 
that I have no problem at all with uh, when Jimmy responds to me saying I can coach the living you know what out of the team with him basically saying hey I think that that may be that brings a smile to my face but let's get serious we got to beat the Buffalo Bills seems pretty apparent there's some overlap between the two of you guys in background and in your present state of mind your goals your approach but there are also enough differences and separate strengths that you have a tremendous partnership out of this. Hey, I feel good when I'm around Jimmy. One of the reasons I feel good is because I got a lot of confidence in him. Uh, I know he can get the job done. Certainly, if Jimmy, in any way, personality-wise, was so offensive to me that I couldn't live with it, then we'd make changes. <laughs> That's just not the case. And occasionally I do get offensive. <laughs> <laughs> there may be misperceptions, at least from your perspective, occasionally about your relationship and the way each of you does your respective job that rub you the wrong way. But I got a feeling that overall you revel in it a little bit. I'm thinking of the Apex commercial where you poke fun at, at your own image. I mean, I think America wants the coach and the owner of the Dallas Cowboys to be flamboyant and to have maybe some rough edges that people can have a feeling about. They don't want you guys to be bland guys. Well, first of all, let me say this. Do you really think I should have stopped to pick him up there on the side of the road? Where are you headed? Super Bowl. Get in. Hey, what's in that? Nah. We've finally been able to uncover the one thing that uh, is deep inside me and I regret. I did want Jimmy's part. I wanted to be driving that automobile rather than sitting out there hitchhiking. <laughs> what would happen if you weren't shooting a commercial and one of your boys dissed you that way? How would Jerry Jones lay down the law? Well, let's say this. If I ever did get back and it was a desolate, long, hard walk, uh, then we probably would uh, obviously have a real good talking to. By the way, uh, if he was a good football player, he can drive by me anytime he wants to. He can still be on the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Guys, I think their relationship is better than it ever has been. Winning has a way of doing that. And I believe that Jones, intellectually, thinks that Johnson right now is the best head coach in the NFL. And Johnson not only respects, but admires Jones, especially his business acumen, which is becoming more and more important with the salary cap and free agency in terms of building a team. But they're so headstrong, both of them, such huge egos, they rub one another the wrong way very often. And when Johnson said he was intrigued about the possibility of Jacksonville, we didn't have time to put it in the piece here. But Jones told me, I had the reddest neck in all of Dallas. And he refers to the whole incident as the Jimmy Jaguar affair. But when I asked him, would you allow another team to speak to Jimmy Johnson? He said, absolutely not, no chance, not in my best interest or the team's best Will Jimmy last out the last five years of his contract there? I think that would be an upset. Uh-huh. What about these two guys, Joe? <laughs> I know somewhat of Jimmy's his problem right now. Hey, this guy's built something. He's getting ready to go to his second Super Bowl, maybe win it. And to use one of Mike's terms, he's getting a little bored. He'd like to be on the open market to make some money. But I'll tell you the truth, if I was the owner and I signed him to 10 years, this guy's good. No way. I'd keep him right there. That's what I'd have to do. Joe, you're not listing Jerry as one of Jimmy's problems, Mike. Let me tell you what I think about this whole deal I just watched. If I didn't know better, I would think one of those guys is lying. But since I know better, I know both of them are lying. <laughs> <laughs> the line There's of the day so far. 